we realize as the Federal Reserve that there's a lag in monetary policy, meaning that they're raising and they've continued to raise, but there's a six to 12 month lag before it hits the economy. The consumer, while growing more and more in debt, is still spending money hand over fist. Yet the consumer is saying, you know what? We are just gonna continue to spend money, probably partly due to the stock market going up, makes them feel richer. The fact that we're seeing inflation, meaning food and energy spiking higher, these are gonna have an impact. Welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today, Gareth Soloway discusses the current state of Bitcoin and emphasizes the significance of closely monitoring the crypto market and the Fed as we approach the latter part of 2023. Gareth addresses the difficulty Bitcoin is having with breaking out under the current market conditions. He believes that Bitcoin may experience further declines, potentially pushing the leading cryptocurrency below its previous bear market low. On Tuesday, the price of Bitcoin decreased as investors anticipated more significant changes in the market due to Fed rate hikes. With large cryptocurrency holders sending unusually high amounts of Bitcoin to exchanges, this resulted in a dip below $29,000. Due to the anticipation of the Federal Reserve's upcoming and aggressive rate hikes, several analysts, including Soloway, are issuing a word of caution regarding Bitcoin's price. They believe that Bitcoin could potentially drop further to an unbelievable $19,000. Let's get into the latest interview with Gareth Soloway, where he discusses the Federal Reserve's next move, inflation concerns, and their potential impact on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Don't forget to share your thoughts and comments down below, and leave a like if you enjoy the content we do here. Yesterday, Fed raises by 25 basis points. 25 basis points totally expected. What we weren't expecting was a more dovish tone. For instance, Jerome Powell said, and this is something where I saw the dollar decline instantly when he said this, he said, we realize as the Federal Reserve that there's a lag in monetary policy, meaning that they're raising and they've continued to raise, but there's a six to 12 month lag before it hits the economy. Right off the bat, that's important to understand. All right, so they're saying that, which means they're gonna be more hesitant. It's a hesitation in further rate hikes. If we see inflation start to uptick, they may have to go back to hiking. But right now, to me, that tells me there's a wait and see attitude. ECB this morning raises 25 basis points, says the same thing as the Fed, says they're data dependent. This morning, we got GDP numbers, 2.4% better than expected. This economy, folks, while you do have certain economic factors that are weak, the main headline numbers, jobs, as well as GDP, very, very strong. The consumer, while growing more and more in debt, is still spending money hand over fist. Credit card debt now north of $1 trillion, the highest of all time. The amount of money that people are spending on housing alone is at an all-time high, it's at 40%. 40% of income being spent on housing, yet the consumer is saying, you know what, we are just gonna continue to spend money, probably partly due to the stock market going up, makes them feel richer, and partly due to the fact that we've become children. Everything's about bailing us out. The Fed will bail us out, the government will send us checks, no big deal, let's just spend, spend, spend. After COVID, we had this urge to just spend very hard. Once you start spending money and living a little bit freer, we know it's very hard to cut back to where you were prior. A couple other things. Durable goods orders coming at four, in at 4.7% this morning. That was better than expected as well. However, what wasn't better than expected, if you take out transportation from durable goods, guess what? It was lower than expected at just 0.6%. So again, this is where it is, right? This is what kind of market we're in. We're in a market that's euphoric. We're in a market that wants to continue up, that people had money on the sidelines. They wanna chase things like stocks and Nvi like Nvidia, or in this case, Meta today after the earnings from Meta. I'll talk about that in a minute. But then we do have underlying economic data that's a little bit weaker, a little bit weaker. One crucial factor to watch is inflation, as evidenced by rising food and energy prices. Month over month, inflation is increasing substantially, while the year-over-year -year figure remains relatively flat. As the economy re-accelerates, the demand for commodities is expected to rise, putting further upward pressure on inflation. For investors, these developments hold significant implications, particularly in the cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin, currently trading below $29,000, is susceptible to an even bigger drop. The market sentiment has been influenced by the Fed's dovish tone, 
and the uncertainty surrounding inflation. Now, one, one number that wasn't weaker was jobless claims today. About six weeks ago, we saw jobless claims spike to about 260,000 or so for three weeks in a row. We've come right back into 220,000. Today's number, 221, lower by 7,000 jobs from, from previous week or the previous week. What that tells us is there's not a lot of firing. There's not a lot of people filing for unemployment. And that's what that number is, folks. And so the reason why you pay attention to this is if that starts to spike, and usually the kicker is this, I'll tell you what to watch for. Watch for 300,000. If we get above 300,000, that's major trouble for the economy. As long as we're below 300, it's not that bad. The fact that we're seeing inflation, meaning food and energy spiking higher, and remember I showed you guys the chart of gasoline at 52 week highs. Oil not that far away from 52 week highs. Month over month, both are up 15 plus percent. So month over month inflation jumping substantially, year over year is almost flat now. If we, we also looked at the DBA, which is the agriculture ETF. It's at 52 week highs up big this month. By the way, look at orange juice. Orange juice spot skyrocketing as well. Not that that's a big one, but I think it's just another commodity that is going parabolic. These are gonna have an impact. And if we're saying now, and the Fed has said yesterday, this was big, the Fed's people said no recession, no recession. If that's the case, and we're gonna start to reaccelerate in the economy, then you have to expect inflation to reaccelerate because demand for commodities is gonna rise, as well as if people are doing better, demand for all products are gonna rise. So everyone was so happy about the consumer price index last month, Get ready guys, it's gonna start upticking. And the key is gonna be is, if it upticks, how does the Fed react? Do they have to go back to raising rates? Do they say, hey, we aren't gonna cut till 2025, which is kind of what they're saying right now. And by the way, yesterday Jerome Powell said that. He said, don't expect us to cut till 2025. That's a lot of time where rates remain very, very high. But remember, after yesterday, we're at a 22 year high on interest rates, 22 years. We have Bitcoin still trading below the range. As long as Bitcoin's below the range, it is vulnerable to a drop. Okay, so again, yes, it's had a couple up days, but remember, these couple up days are coming on the back of the Fed saying what they're, they're saying here and all these other things. So again, the fact that we're not back above 29.9 to 30,000 is a little problematic, doesn't mean it can't happen. Watch again, are we creating a bear flag here that could divulge into a bigger move down? I wanna show you the Ethereum chart. The Ethereum chart is remaining in this channel, downside vulnerable to this level. This would be the equivalent of that 27,000 level hit on Bitcoin. So if we get down to about 1770 or so, that's your support. That's the level you wanna hold on Ethereum. If it breaks below that, trouble brewing. As long as it stays at or above that level, honestly, just like Bitcoin, Bitcoin stays at 27 or above, it's okay. Not that big of a deal. Soloway notes that the recent rejection near $29,000 suggests potential weakness in Bitcoin's price and the possibility of further downward movement. Soloway advises that investors be cautious, recognizing the historical patterns and the uncertainties surrounding the crypto market's short-term movements while maintaining a bullish outlook on Bitcoin long-term. What do you think about the latest interview with Gareth? And what are your thoughts on the reasons behind Bitcoin's stagnation? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.